Hi there, my name is Charlie Fawkes and I've been doing a lot of research into megaliths. They're not really my field. My degrees are in English Lit and Computing. That's what my Masters is in. So a very different area for me to be researching into. However, um, I've read some very interesting books, including this one by Christopher Dunn, The Giza Power Plant, um, Technologies of Ancient Egypt which is all about piezo electric power generation. So thinking, yes, pyramids are big stone structures. What else is a big stone structure? It immediately struck me that Stonehenge and many of the other megalithic sites are similar. So I decided I would buy myself a voltmeter and go out and see if I could get any results to prove that these stones actually generate a real energy which is tangible, i.e. electricity. And you might be thinking, how is it that stone can actually generate electricity? Well, if you're familiar with piezoelectric effect, you might know that stone such as granite, from which Stonehenge is built, actually contains a large amount of quartz and feldspar and other minerals. Um, if you've read anything about quartz and piezoelectricity, you'll realise that um, if you input a small amount of electricity into quartz, and then apply pressure to it, it actually amplifies the amount of electricity that is within it. Then when you release the pressure from it, it actually generates um, more electricity than you put into it in the first place. Now, structures such as Stonehenge are all centred around the idea of the trilithon, which is a massive capstone supported by two pillars. So you have an enormous weight, some capstones, the one at Ligwe that I saw, 25 tonnes, which is an amazing amount of pressure to exert onto these um, trilithons, the orthostats, the upright stones. So where are the orthostats getting their initial charge? Because as I've said, the quartz actually needs uh, a certain amount of electricity in it to start with. Well, people have talked about the stones have an energy, the stones have some sort of mystical aura. Actually, it's not that at all. From the research that I've been doing, it seems as though a lot of these um, sites are actually placed on um, fault lines in the earth. Now, fault lines and earthquake zones and areas like that actually generate an amount of electromagnetic energy. If you've ever read anything about earth lights, or by all means Google or YouTube earth lights, you'll see some videos of what is the um, visible parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. You can actually see the release of electromagnetic energy just before an earthquake is going to occur. Fault lines in the rock patterns of various locations are where, um, over time in geology, different deposits of rock have occurred for one reason or another and there is a break in the rock where one type of stone begins and another ends or there are natural fissures which is the case at the Ligui um, dolmen that I examined. Now if these um, faults actually produce energy in terms of electromagnetic energy, such as is seen with earth lights, then this will permeate the rocks that are built above the fault line. And we need some way, or the ancients devised a way, of actually getting the energy out of those rocks. I don't know what they used it for. Um, I don't know if it had some sort of spiritual significance to them, or they actually put it to some sort of practical use. Um, we don't know that. Um, all that I know is that when you play music to the stones, the electricity actually comes out. And you're probably thinking, well, that's a bit strange. How does that work? Well, if you look at a piece of rock like this, if I sit it next to a speaker and I play some really loud bass-driven kind of music to it, you will actually feel the rock vibrate pretty much the same as if you're upstairs a few doors away from somebody who's having a really loud party, your floor might be shaking. Um, it's the same sort of thing. Sound waves actually permeate rock. So what they do, I'm thinking, 
is um, allow the crystals to resonate and that produces the release of the pressure slightly so tiny that you can't even see it but allows for the um, electricity to come out in some kind of a usable way so basically the squeeze and release of the piezo electric effect is what the music is doing it allows the rock to expand very slightly and alleviates the pressure on the molecules then the electricity is able to discharge <coughs> What we've got to stop thinking of is the ancients as a primitive culture. They were not probably a lot more intelligent than we are today because they had ways of actually living with the planet and the planet's energy. This is where they were taking their energy from. Um, one of the books that I have also read is Stars, Stones and Scholars by a chap called Andis Collins and he's actually done a lot of work looking at the markings on megaliths and they relate to various star systems so he can look at a number of markings on any given megalith and say oh yes that's Cassiopeia or the constellation of Pegasus or whatever um, and they're very precise star maps also the geographic location of the various megalithic monuments for example um, the ones in the Russian Caucasus also are placed according to various star systems, stars within those star systems. And this has done a lot of work on that. And I have to say his research is um, pretty convincing. So we have to stop thinking about the ancients as being um, loincloth wearing cavemen with bones through their noses they certainly were they were extremely intelligent so I do believe that the sighting of these monuments over fault lines is not coincidental it's not something that they didn't take into account um, a lot of the dolmen and various structures that I've examined have been on fault lines not just Ligui but um, Taladi in Malta that I've just come back from that is also placed over a fault line. Um, it's the major fault line that runs from, if I have it correct, Era back to the Madliena Tower. And there are numerous megaliths, dolmens, temple structures along that um, line. Um, also, reading the guidebook for Hajarim and Manaidra, it does seem that that's also another area that is very active for faults. But Perhaps many of you are saying, how can rock conduct electricity? Well, if you read any of the works of Tesla, he has actually managed to um, find ways to send electricity around the entire globe through the ionosphere. He found ways of conducting electricity through water in terms of using extremely low frequency waves, such as the type that are now used by the military for submarine communications. It's, um, it's very possible and certainly what I've shown you with my videos with voltmeters are actually examples of um, the stones actually outputting something that is tangible in terms of electricity. Uh, from my recent work in Malta it does seem as well that there's an electromagnetic component in this. We got some readings that indicate that. So it's not as crazy an idea as it first sounds especially if you consider that the ancients were not primitive they were very intelligent